Mystery House. Mystery House, that strange publishing firm owned by Dan and Barbara Glenn, where each new novel is acted out by the Mystery House staff before it is accepted for publication. Mystery House. Come right in, Art. We're just about ready to start. Hi, Mrs. Glenn. Where's Dan? He was called out of town on business, a publisher's convention. Uh-oh. I know all about these conventions. So do I, Mr. Hearn. That's why I loaded him down with so much work he won't have time to draw a deep breath. Say, hey, speaking of deep breath, have you ever noticed how important breathing is to a radio announcer? In what way? Why, you have to breathe deeply to make your commercial announcements sound natural and easy. Take this, for example. Everybody in your places. Set the scene, guys. Death at Deadline. Tonight's story opens in the private office of Luke Chilton, managing editor of The Star. One of his reporters, Pamela Carter, enters to announce an unwelcome caller. You have a caller, Luke. Oh, yes, sir. I'm busy with them right now, making the W on page one. The same old caller, Luke. You don't mean Jim Bullen. The same. He always comes when I'm busy and he knows I'm doing well. I'll tell him you're not in. No, that won't do. He knows I'm in. Look, Luke, why not give him a bum's rush? Just because he was a reporter on the star and you found him. That's never so, Pam. I feel sorry for the guy. He could have been a good reporter if he... If he hadn't had a heart full of larceny. Why, you'd have lost your own job if you'd let him get away with the kind of shit down he was pulling. No respectable people. Oh, no, I know. Show him. You are too soft, Luke. We'll see you, Jim. Thanks. Oh, uh, don't run a mic off, Danny. Hello, Jim. Busy as a little bumblebee, aren't you, Luke? I am busy, Jim. And, um, a little hard up. Ten bucks is just about all I can spend. Look, Luke. Surprise. I'm not after money tonight. No? No. I've been thinking things over, and I've decided to come back to work for this time. I'm sorry, Jim. You're a good reporter, but after what happened, you... well, it was blackmailed you in. You suppressed the story for money. The whole staff knew about it. If I'd put you back on, I'd lose a respectable buddy in the plant. I always liked the star. If you're ready to get down to business and do a good reporting job, there's no reason why you can't get back to work. But not on this newspaper. Better tell the star I want to work for, Luke. You don't seem to understand. I'm sorry, Jim. Look, I've decided to go back on the star. And if you're smart, you'll take me. I told you I can't, Jim. If you don't, you'll be making a big mistake. Then it's a mistake I'll have to make. I'm giving you a chance, you're, Luke. You're giving me a chance. Now I'll listen to what I said. You fired me. I took my spanking like a little man. But I've decided the period of punishment's over. I'm bad. No, you are not. You with your pious talk of blackmail. You know why you fired me just as well as I do. Do you think I ever fell for that blackmail gag? That was the truth. You yes. fired me because you're in love with Pam Carter and you thought I was in the way. You can't talk to me like that and get away with it. I can't talk that way because you don't like to hear the truth. I was running you a close race with Pam till you fired get me. Get out of here. I don't have to put up with this kind of talk. You blew right in here. No right in the sky? Why? Because I was fired by you. But you're going to hire me again. You're wrong, Jim. Did wrong. Now get out of here. I'll have some of the boys too, you out. I'm getting back under the sky, back where Pam is. Back where I can straighten things out with her. And if I can't do it because you're here, I'll have to see that you're not here. You uh, think you can get my job? Go ahead and try. I'm not talking about your job, Luke. I'm talking about you. I can get rid of you so easy you wouldn't believe it. Permanently. <laughs> Well, another day, another dollar. 
I'm heading for home and a little shut eye. I'll uh, buy a cup of coffee if you wait for me. No, thanks. I need to sleep. You stick around here till the first edition's off the press, and that means another half hour till, in the words of the old song, I'm tired and I want to go to bed. <laughs> well, don't say I didn't offer. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night, Lou. Oh, um, by the way, did Jim Bowen make another touch? Uh, no. This time he demanded his job back. Demanded his job back? Yes. Uh-huh. But he must be crazy. Made all kinds of threats. I don't see why you sit up with him. <laughs> well, see you tomorrow. Right, then. Well, I might as well get out some nice to the city other day and know why I'd ask. Ah, you want to see me? They're a late seven, Major. Yes, sir. And I want to see you. Have a chance. I'll stand up, thanks. I felt better on my feet. What do you want? I'm Jeff Corklin. Oh, yes. We've uh, had a few stories about you, Mr. Corklin. But I never had the pleasure of meeting him. It ain't going to be any pleasure for you, Chilton. No? Huh? No. I got a tip you're letting loose on me in tomorrow morning's paper. Uh, then you've been misinformed, Corklin. Not that it wouldn't be a pleasure to have a story on you. You got it, all right. If you'd uh, oblige me with the facts... I'd be happy to prove it. Don't try to bluff me, Chilton. You blow me wide open with a story about my gambling joint. You're wrong. If I ever get the chance, I will. If you don't figure in tomorrow's news. Not yet, at any rate. I'll believe you when I see the paper. Well, you won't have to wait long. The boy should bring me a copy in a couple of minutes. I'll wait. Who uh, told you there was going to be a story about you? That's none of your business. But I'm afraid it is. The people on this paper are telling out stories about me. Oh, it wasn't anybody who worked for you. I know how you feel about that. I got the same kind of trouble. Rats that give tip-off. Oh, pardon me. Here's your paper, Mr. Shelton. Yes. Thanks, Billy. You can beat it now. Okay. Good night, Mr. Shelton. Good night. Yeah, lady, children. Look it over. Is it on the front page? I told you there isn't any story about you. You can start with the front page if you like. All right. You know, the paper seem kind of dead without the war news anymore. A nice murder, huh? They all want to spend some time reading that one. Professional interest? Yeah. Hey, hey, what's that? Yeah. What are you trying to pull? Pull? I don't get you. It's probably about me, right in the bottom of the front page. About you? Listen now. You think I can't read? <laughs> Jeff Coughlin, number one hoodlum and gangster is through. Tomorrow the star begins a sensational expose of his operations, naming names, dates, and places. The star today accuses Jeff Coughlin of crimes ranging from crooked gambling to murder. All of these charges will be substantiated in future obscure articles. Files on Corklin have been built up over a period of months, and all the star's information will be turned over to any authorities who are interested. Today, the Didn't star... Oh, so you didn't know nothing about it, huh? You saw the story before me last. What do you think you're talking to? A sap? Somebody's been playing tricks around here. Just a minute. Hey, I'm moving for that phone and I'll bring it. I just want to call the conclusion room. I've got to find out where the story came from. You know where it came from, all right. I tell you, I don't... Okay, why, Jack? Take a look at all this information you say you got. I don't have any information. Well, I think you're going to send me to the pen without my even raising a finger. Let's have it, sir. I don't have a thing I can. Oh, no? Not much. You put yourself right out on a limb like you're doing that story if you didn't have proof. Come across. That story never came out of this office. I'm getting kind of tired of listening to that kind of guff, Felton. I ain't playing with a little boy. I mean business. Fool. Put down that gun. You get me that proof you're yelping about or I'll blast your head off. Now, where's this stuff in? Look around if you won't believe me. I'll look around, all right. There's nothing here. An obvious cheater from cutting the composure room and more papers to bring out. You see, you got me right on a spot, don't you? Dope on a murder rap, huh? I don't know a thing about it. Somebody spilled it to you. One of my boys. Think you got me cold, huh? Well, let me tell you something, wise boy. I got you cold, too. The joint's deserted. Even the office boy is left. Must be close at three o'clock in the morning. Nobody on the street. I can get away from here plenty easy. And I can fix up an alibi. Now, either you give me that information or I'm going to blow you right off of the map. You fool, you've got to believe me. I believe you, all right. I believe what you wrote in the paper. It says right at the top of the page. If you read it in a star, it's so. And plenty of other people will believe it, too. What have I got to do to convince you that I don't know anything about it? You couldn't do it, funny boy. First, I get a tip from a guy who knows what you're doing. He says certain things. I come here and what he says checks. 
everything checks except you. Okay, so will I. Are you sergeant with it? What do you want me to do? Give me all that proof you say you got about me. But I don't have a thing. I'm getting kind of tired mucking around with you. You just come across me for I count to three or I'm going to blast you. One, two... Now listen to me. Who gave you a tip? That might be important. The guy used to work for you. Still a friend of yours. A guy who spends a lot of time with you. Sure. Jim Bolin. He doesn't know a thing about what's going on around here. He doesn't know about that story. Tell him you're falling for time. One, two... All right, wise guy. Oh, oh, yep. You can train. You wish. Fall, guy. How does Jim Boland, the ex-reporter, figure in this murder? And what good will it do him if it does not any good? We'll find out in the second act of tonight's story. Meanwhile, here's a message from our sponsor. And now... Act two of Death at Deadline. Jeff Corcoran has made a frenzied search of Luke Shelton's office without finding any evidence of his crime. He's just getting ready to leave. <laughs> Jim Bowling. Yeah. Where do you think you're going, Corcoran? You think big enough to stop me, Bowling? I wouldn't wait till you then if I were you, Corcoran. I won't hesitate to kill you and your covers before you even get started. You sure, you rat. You were the guy who cut me off. Sure. You? Sure, I was the one. And I know what you do, too. That's the big idea. You thought I was working with you, didn't you, Corsa? Well, I wasn't. I'll, uh, take your gun if you don't mind. No. I said I'll take it. Thanks. You took me off in a story. You told me how long to wait before I came up here so I'd get to talk to Chilton alone. Now you're trying to turn me in. What's it all about? Maybe I'll tell you sometime, Corson. Right now, I think I'd better call the police. Oh, Riley? Riley, this is Jim Bowling over at the Star. Bring over a couple of good strong boys. Yeah, I've got a murder for you, and it's a little tough to handle. No, oh, no, I'm not joking. I said a murder, and that's exactly what I mean. Right. Goodbye. Why, you dirty double cop? Stand by, husband. There's nothing I like any better than to shoot. You mean you were working on the star all this time? Sure. You know, Luke had an idea that no reporter could get the goods on Corson because the Hoods had every newspaper man in town spotted. So we planted that blackmail story about me and I got fired. And at least that's what everybody thought. But you really were punished. You mean I was taken off the payroll? Sure. Luke was afraid there would be some loops in the office, so he really did it up brown. That's why I came in to borrow money from him so often. He was giving me a full amount of my check every week, and then he was going to get the money back from the paper once we broke with the story. But he seemed so convincing. I really thought... I know. Yeah, good old Luke. He could put on a good act when he had to. But he didn't even tell me. Tell hey, honey. That was one thing he really felt bad about. Now, did they ever tell me? No, about making me look bad to you. He figured he'd sort of broken things up between us. Said the first thing he was going to do after the storybook was throw me with you. But Luke and I were in love with each other. We were going to get married. That bothered him too, honey. He said he was afraid you'd fallen for him and that, well, he just wasn't a marrying kind. But that's not true. Try not to be sorry, Fanny. He was putting on a show to get a whale of a big story. He was a newspaper man. But what happened with the story? 
What happened to all the information about Corcoran? The documents and things. Corcoran got them, of course. But the cops can't figure out how he got him out of the place unless he had one of his boys with him and sent him out before he got loose. Oh, hey, Officer Riley. Hi, Riley. Uh, Corcoran get him down, tells you where he gets the papers yet? No, but he's done better on that. He's confessed to another murder. Another murder? There's a former of the star composing room. You heard him too. It seems kind of funny, too, reading that note that had been called out of town right when a murder was taking place. But why would he kill the composing room from Yeah. He says he went to this Schultz and asked him to keep the story out of the paper. Schultz wouldn't do it. So he got bloody him outside and killed him. He was planning on going back into the composing room then and taking the story out himself. But he didn't know how to unlock the page for him. Did he, uh, tell you where the body is? No, worse luck. That's what's burning me up. He tells us he's killed his troops, and then he sits and laughs at us. He says it's up to us to find the body. And we can't do nothing about it till we find the cop. That's right. You can't. Can you? <laughs> Here he is, but make it snappy. Hello, Miss Carter. Hello. Listen, Carter, what are you standing around for? I said I wanted to talk to the lady alone. All right, all right. But no tricks now. Daddy, Mr. Coughlin? Is that gag of yours about my telling the composing room foreman working? Right. The police have finally started looking for him and You know, kind of funny how things work out. What do you mean? Why, here you are hating me for killing your sweetheart and wanting revenge. And I hate Jim Bowling and want revenge. And the only way we can both get what we want is by working together. Somehow, Mr. Corcoran, I don't hate you as much as I did it first. You believe my story about what happened, huh? I know it's clear. Jim Bowling is just as busy at killing Luke as if he pulled the trigger. It was that story. And everything depends on my hunch that Jim Bowling told that story... Then pick you up. I was crazy tall when I seen it in the star. Being in pimp like that meant I was all through. I lost my head. This is exactly what you were supposed to do. If the police would just find the composing room for them, stop. Baby, you don't even know he's dead. He has to be. The only way Jim could have told that story was to turn him so. And he couldn't just get him so soon. The guy left a note saying he was going away. But the note was tight. No one's still there than me. But you can't touch him. We could just find the body. You may not even be a body. There is. Somewhere. Cousin, I just got to make Jim Bowling pay for playing Luke. Feel like I'll help you with that, Jim. I'll get Jim Bowling. Somehow. Somewhere. You know, baby, when you grit your teeth like that, I'd give you a job in my mob. If I was out. <laughs> Well, I'll see you for the night, Sam. Going home? No. Um, I wish you'd stay a few minutes, Jim. Why? I just called Officer Riley. What for? I got some new evidence on Luke's murder. Look, honey, I wish you'd forget that murder business. It's all settled. They got caught when cold. What more do you want? They're still him and Chase. You know something? I don't believe Chase is even dead. I think Corcoran used his disappearance to mess things up. He knows they don't go to trial till they find Chase's body. That's a very interesting theory. It says you don't know the facts. What do you mean? You see. Oh, there's I now. It's come as fast as I could, Miss Carter. What's this all about, anyway? I want you to put Jim Bowen under arrest, Officer Riley. What? Oh, you're joking. I was never more serious in my life. Sam, what's this all about? It's your idea that joke has been rotten case. It's not a joke. Do you think I believed you when you said Luke wasn't really in love with me? Eh? So you're sure about that? I never believed you for a minute. You hated Luke because he fired you. Because I loved him instead of you. For a lot of reasons. You decided to kill him, but you didn't have the nerve to do it yourself. 
And you were not too clever for that anyway. Oh, Pam, please. That is a melodramatic. You took Jeff Corson off, but Luke is going to run an expose of Corson's record. You told Corson to come in after the deadline, and there wouldn't be anyone else in the office. That's a beautiful story. And the cool one. Then you wrote that story about Corson. A threat to expose his whole set. Look, I wasn't even supposed to be working on the paper. I'd have had fun getting a story published, wouldn't I? That's where I'm going to get you, Jim. You had to enlist Herman Schultz's aid to get that story with the star. You told him some lie. Probably that Luke had added it in. Once that story was locked up in the page for him, we sealed Luke's death warrant. That's a nice theory, Pam, but you don't have an ounce of proof for it. That's right, Miss Carter. You've got to be careful about making such accusations. Oh, I don't mind, Riley. But I do have proof. I got the original copy of that Parker News story. And it wasn't quite a loose type like it. Is that right now? Which doesn't prove much either, does it? I had a, well, a friend of mine built into your apartment, Jim. The type on your typewriter checks with the typing in the story. So what? So what? It means that you wrote the story. Well, what if it does? You killed it. You got caught him to come in to see him. You timed it. So we get there just before the paper came out with that story. You what if I did? You can't hang a thing on me. I'm literally in the clear. Jeff Corkin admitted to you, children. He did it. There's no argument there. You can't do a thing to me. That's what I wanted to hear you say, Jim. You can't tell me. had it coming to him. But I didn't kill him. You think you're awfully clever, don't you? Clever enough so that I wasn't going to involve myself in murder. And I didn't. I got what I wanted without taking any risk. You're forgetting one thing, Jim. One awfully important thing. I didn't forget anything. You're I... forgetting the murder of Herman Schultz. Remember? That he wasn't murdered, eh? Oh, yes, yes, he was. Cawthon confessed to that one, too. Cawthon, why? He's using that as a stall to... Oh, hello, Jerry. Got the first edition for it? Uh, yes, he's got it. Right here. Thanks. Herman Schultz isn't dead. He no. Is. Take a look at the front page of the star, Jim. Let me see. Police found body of Sky Foreman. The body of Herman Schultz, star composing in Foreman, was found late last night by the police, a bullet in his temple. The police were baffled by the fact that the bullet was not from the gun of Jeff Corcoran, who had previously confessed to the murder. That puts a different light on things now. You were holding a gun on Corcoran when you called me over here to get him. I'd like to be taking a look at that gun, Bolton. Maybe the ballistics department would be interested. Take that frame up. I didn't kill him at I'd like to see that gun, Bowen. But I let him have it, Jim. No. No, you're framing me. You did it. Come in, Tom. You did it. That's you... right, Jim. Blame everyone but yourself. Hand over that gun, Bowen. I... All right. Yes. Say, I'll get it. Say, I'll get it. Try to shoot at me, will you? Why, you dirty... Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill anybody. Well, I had to do it. Now that that's his revolver against the body. You know, it's funny they didn't tell me you were the station about finding that body. Did you get in any case like I did? There isn't anybody, Riley. What? No body? But it's him right here in the back. I know. That's the second time that the paper has had a funny story. I thought there was a body, and I was hunting for it. I discovered that Jim had paid the Herman Schultz to put that story about Corcoran in the paper. Paid him plenty. Schultz was hiding in Jim's apartment till this thing blew over. But if Schultz was hiding in Bowen's apartment, then Bowen knew he wasn't there. Last night, I asked Jim if I could borrow his revolver. Said I'd been scared that you could murder. He let me take it. Early this evening, I returned it to him with one minute back. When he saw that story, he thought I'd framed him, just as he framed Luke. He could see the police checking the bullet and finding the prints in his gun. It never occurred to him that the story in the star was another suit. It may have been a fake, but it sure got the result. Yes, it... I took care of things, I... I suppose I...
Thank you. Thank you.